Okay, hi. So I'm Laura Lewis. I'm an assistant professor in biomedical engineering. Uh, and my lab focuses on imaging brain dynamics across sleep and wakefulness. So our work really um, operates in two parallel themes. Um, and the first is how should we use multimodal imaging to better analyze and understand human brain dynamics? Um, and so I th think um, the technologies that we have available to measure human brain activity have been a real challenge in many kinds of neuroscience studies. Um, what's been really interesting over the past decade is that the hardware technology for human brain imaging has really advanced. But the data that we get from those hardware are quite noisy, complex, and high dimensional. Um, and so a lot of my work focuses on how should we analyze those streams of data uh, to better understand what's happening in the human brain. Um, so we use new techniques that allow us to do fMRI at very fast time scales. So we can image, for example, the whole brain over a couple hundred of milliseconds. Um, and since what we measure is a hemodynamic signal, part of what we work on is how can we separate out what the brain is doing from what the heart is doing and what your lungs are doing. So for example, understanding uh, cardiac, respiratory, and neural signals in our data. We also try to model how the vasculature responds to neural activity so that we can account for the, how that happens and use that information to figure out how rapidly or slowly neural activity was evolving. And what we're moving towards is um, because we image the brain at the same time as we perform electrophysiology with EEG, we have these really rich simultaneous data sets where you have electrical activity of the brain at the same time as you have a high resolution image of its deep um, brain circuits. And so we're moving towards computational methods where we can extract the really low dimensional dynamics that exist in these very kind of complex data sets. Um, so part of our work is to develop these approaches, uh, but then the goal is to really use them to answer neuroscience questions. And so the one that we focus on is sleep, wakefulness, and arousal. Um, so sleep is amazing. Um, it's uh, very important for brain health, um, and it's also just a really fascinating phenomenon that every day that, um, that we're alive, we spend hours asleep, unconscious, or dreaming, um, and it's still very mysterious why we do it, why we need it, and how it is that these dynamics affect our cognition and our health so much. Um, and we know that if you don't sleep, um, it's a risk factor for all kinds of neurological and psychiatric disorders. And sleep seems to play a role in everything from Alzheimer's to schizophrenia. So part of what we work on is we use these new techniques to really try and understand what are the brain dynamics that underlie sleep. Um, we see oscillations, for example, in particular kinds of brain regions that we can image directly with fMRI. And we're trying to relate those to how your perceptual awareness changes during sleep um, and how it kind of shapes the routing of information through brain networks. Um, we also study sleep deprivation. So this is the happy version of the picture. The cat is very happy to be sleeping. If we don't sleep, we're not so happy. Um, and so a single night of poor sleep can affect attention and can also affect mood. Chronic sleep deprivation, even though people may not always notice how much it's affecting them, can still have profound effects on attention and mood. So we're trying to understand how sleep disruptions in turn affect these other higher level cognitive aspects. We're also interested in understanding what are the deep brain control circuits that seem to switch you between uh, sleep and wakefulness. So for example, the thalamus has many um, tiny nuclei that seem to play important roles in controlling what kind of sleep state you're in. And so we do imaging studies to try and figure out what those circuits may be. Um, and then finally, we also study non-neural activity during sleep. Um, so this video in red shows blood oxygenation, and in blue um, at the base shows CSF flow through the head. And what we see is when people are sleeping, there's these large waves, both of blood oxygenation and then corresponding waves of C CSF that are flowing through the brain. Um, so sleep seems to be important not just for how the electrical activity of our neurons change, but there's actually uh, kind of waves of fluid flow that appear during, uh, in the brain during sleep as well. And we're really interested now in understanding how this kind of um, fluid flow dynamic might be affected in things like Alzheimer's disease, where there's a buildup, an aggregate of proteins in the brain. Okay, that's it. Thank you.